Marianne has been the subject of a number of exhibitions and in uh, numerous collections around the world, there has not been um, a deep dive into his practice, uh, specifically not outside a, a Jewish lens. And this exhibition's efforts were really around reinserting Marianne into the art historical canon where he belongs. Uh, Marianne passed away prematurely at the age of 50 and his work for the most part has gone unknown and under shown. Um, so this was really an opportunity to dig, research and bring together works that have not been exhibited let alone published before. I was familiar with Marianne's work from a young age. I myself are th am a third generation Holocaust survivor. My grandmother and grandfather were both survivors of the Holocaust. And my grandmother was hidden in a convent in France during World War II with Marianne's wife, Annette. And my grandmother and Annette kept uh, a long-standing friendship uh, following the war. They both uh, immigrated to New York and kept in touch with a number of other girls that had been hidden with them. When I started my career in the arts in New York City at a commercial art gallery, uh, Annette invited myself and my mother to her apartment on the Upper East Side. And when I walked in, it was nothing short of a time capsule. There were piles and piles and racks of Marianne's paintings, drawings in cabinets. Uh, even his paintbrush was sitting on a drafting table as though it had not been moved since he last worked in the space 30 years ago. Fast forward nearly 20 years and um, I am uh, in Miami and uh, starting my work here at MoCA and uh, walking through uh, the Art Basel Miami Beach Art Fair and there hanging was Marianne's paintings. I was completely blown away and you know here I was just taking on this leadership at a, a museum that was located in the center of a highly populous immigrant community, uh, thinking about the audiences that we serve and also the work that we've been doing as an institution uh, focused on underexplored artists and stories that have maybe not been told and uh, thought that there might be something there to further explore. And it was from that moment that we brought Allison Gingeras onto the project. Um, Allison, being an international curator with so much knowledge of um, uh, this period and her own connections to Paris and Poland um, and Marianne's original birth state, uh, was able to go on this journey of investigating and putting together so many pieces and uh, what this show has become has been nothing less than thrilling. It was a very deliberate choice to not want to overdetermine a viewer, especially a viewer who probably had never heard of Marion or his story with the extremely harrowing experience of his imprisonment during the Shoah. And to me, it was important that we enter into the visual and emotional intensity of his paintings as he wanted to be perceived. He, in his lifetime, multiple times articulated his desire not to be pigeonholed or put into a kind of ghetto of being a Holocaust artist. That category he did not um, want to be affiliated with, yet his work and that subject matter in ways that are both veiled and explicit, re, you know, reoccur constantly. So I felt that it was important that uh, the viewer traversed numerous galleries in which we can really get into his, his unique painting style, get into his subject matter, sort of have an overview of his visual and aesthetic universe, and then experience the um, more complicated history of how he, of what happened to him, but also how he um, processed that trauma in very specific and groundbreaking ways. Uh, Eke Homo is a film that Marianne made at the end of his life. And uh, he made that at the Chelsea Hotel with fellow artist Kenny Schneider. 
What it is is a black and white experimental film from the late 70s where he's giving a testimonial of his experience in the Holocaust, but at the same time he's introducing uh, news and images from the news um, of that moment. So we're seeing images from the civil rights movement, the anti-Vietnam War movement, and other images of dictators. And so uh, for me that was a real turning point because it took Marianne's lived experience and trauma and really translated it into understanding his interest in social political issues and the human experience in general. And as a contemporary art museum, that film for us has been such a source of inspiration for exciting programs and discussions. I think that because we're living in a period where democracy itself is in question in this country and across countries, even in Poland, his, his um, birth country, um, in which we are seeing authoritarianism um, come back in unbridled ways. I think that his significance is not just as a witness, but as um, an artist who really tried to channel the drive to reconstruct oneself and the very notion of human in all of his paintings and all of his drawings and everything that he he wrote and tried to create so i think that his work transcends even um it's 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 function as a part of the historical record i mean i think he's really a thinker of the struggle to maintain humanity against the worst odds and the importance of expressing these things um, in, in whatever form one can. Right now, this is the moment where the Holocaust is passing from memory to history. And Marianne's work speaks, bears witness uh, to that history and also speaks to our contemporary moment as we dive in and learn more about his practice, his biography, uh, you know, his various interests and uh, inspirations. There are so many entry points to the exhibition and um, I think are so relative to our contemporary moment and, you know, I hope that our visitors continue to stay engaged with the exhibition through our panel discussions, our conversations, um, and visiting and revisiting the show while we have it. Uh, coming to the museum right now is having the opportunity to see works that have not been on view publicly before, and we're really proud of that. <laughs>